Hello and welcome to the channel. So I've got a Marshall Base Series 4210 in here and uh, it's it got an intermittent fault. Now I've just had a bit of a look at this amp and everything on the front panel seems fine. So I thought the first culprit it'll be the send and return sockets. This amp has been somewhere damp and it does smell of, of damp. So I've just plugged a lead into the uh, return on the amp and uh, pulled it out again and the amp stayed off. So it looks like the contacts on the send and return socket are corroded and I'll need a clean. So I think what we're just going to do with this amp is I'm just going to draw it out its chassis and we're going to have a look inside and just check round to see if there's any signs of mould or any damp in there and just give it a good clean. Right, so I've got this amp on the bench and uh, the chassis already had a piece out of me. Again, these chassis being sharp on the corners and things, usual deal. So it's on this send and return. If we just lift this amp up a bit here, you can see here these this effects loop, this send and return. And this is the problem on these sockets or it's one of the problems but we're going to really have to look at this amp because it's been in the damp just to see if there's any more dry joints. This board here has, if, if there's any dry joints on this board, on the parts or on these sockets, the whole of that board is going to have to come out. <laughs> I'll take all the knobs off the front, just see how many we've got on there. If we look in here, you can see that there's some mold or something on those where the damp's got underneath the the insulation on there and the, as i say this the smell in here it, it this amp's obviously been somewhere where it's been very damp it's also had the uh, output transistors changed you can see there and this um heat sink paste all over the place there it's like an explosion in a cake factory heat sink paste on this transistor here so so someone's clearly been in here doing repairs don't see anything else now this amp is a 450 watt base amp it's a 2b10 combo and we've got a tube in there look you can see a valve ECC 83 so kind of like the valve state era where you know you find the the odd tube on the preamp stage there it's got parametric EQ switchable compressor separate EQ for each channel so it sounds like the deal built-in DI output Let's have a look at the state of those caps so we can see they look okay. The ones at the bottom there, can't get into those. So again, if, if this board's got to come out, this is a major job. It's why a lot of people don't like working on these type of amps because the work involved in just stripping them down is uh, quite a lot of work. So there we go so i think if we look on here we can see we've got this board here and that's where the sockets are mounted for the send and return so we need to take that board out so it's, it's no good trying to clean these sockets while they're in in the amp we need to get the board out and clean them properly so that's the first job right we've got this board out and uh, you can see that uh, it's uh, someone sprayed something in it other than the proper contact cleaner that you should use for these but that just gets gunked up over time in there and then just causes more problems so we need to clean all that out as well you can see it on there you perhaps can't see it but it's all over the pins so it's all over the inside can't just spray stuff inside and clean these sockets right so I've cleaned these sockets but, and cleaned off some of the uh, 
spray I don't know whether that was silicon spray or what it was there wasn't a lot on it just a bit but these tracers are starting to look like they cracked that one I think on there is cracked so what we're going to do with these is we're going to flow them with solder and then we're going to suck off that solder because this will be un unleaded solder and it's not notorious for cracking but to get that solder off we we need to mix it with the leaded solder and then we suck it all off and then we put the we just re-solder it again with leaded solder and that's the best way of getting them off if you don't do it that way you're putting too much heat onto these tracers trying to melt this solder and get it off and inevitably the board gets damaged sometimes so it's uh, the best way to do it is and we'll just do all they just the socket so we just flow everyone with leaded and then go around suck it all off and then it'll come off very easy then once you've mixed it with the leaded solder and then just solder it back up again and there we go so that's the soldered up now on there you can see so we'll get this pot back in right so we've got the board back in and all seems good now checked everything else check this input socket check more or less everything and in there can't see any other problems the only <laughs> this fans going at it a hammer and nail and uh, this heatsink paste is just everywhere and there's just way too much on those and these are quite warm quite hot you've got all those array of resistors down there you can see those huge resistors and they're all dissipating heat that one's too hot to touch and they are yeah, there's a lot of heat, you can feel it from this fan at the back, there's a lot of heat. But this this heat sink is quite hot and uh, yeah, I can feel that. That's uh, So those transistors are getting rather warm. So much for a, uh, a thin layer of heat sink paste. And uh, Here's some I've taken off uh, to go with me lunch. This is just, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. But that seems to be a fix. I just check the fuses, make sure they're the correct values. And I think we can button this one up. Not, not a massive job. And we'll have a bit of a listen. Although it's a base amp, but we'll we'll have a listen anyway. Right, so we're plugged into this Marshall base amp, and was going to use the acoustic through it, um, but uh, and I bust a string on it. I could also make use of this compressor that's on here. And that did sound a lot a lot better with the acoustic, but I thought with
Well, there we go. It's a bit different, that, I think. And the, the compressor there. And you don't, I ain't used a compressor for years, actually. I just saw that and thought, hmm, I'll try that. And when you were kids, you just to buy every single pedal you could. I remember having a, a compressor pedal and just completely dismissed it as a useless entity. But it's good for bass, just not for guitar, although it does create a, a nice effect on here. So that'll do it now for this one, I think. So we, we've, I mean, we've got this up and running. So that'll do it, so thanks for watching. I know it's not the usual thing you see on this channel, but you all take care, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now.